Okay, so today we're going to go through how to run a maximum likelihood phylogeny in the program MEGA. And so when you open MEGA, the link for which will be down in the description, but once you open MEGA, you should see a graphical user interface that looks like this. So the first thing that you'll want to do is you will want to open an alignment or build an alignment. Um, for instance, I am going to be analyzing this file today. I will be aligning it. So whether you're building an alignment from scratch or opening a, a file that you already have, you'll see all of the sequence names here and all of the sequence data to the right. So this is an alignment I have of 40 sequences. You'll notice that these are already aligned. Um, but if you need to align your sequences, the way that you do that is actually just in this window. So if you go up here to the alignment tab, you can either implement cluster W or muscle to align your sequences. So if you were to hit cluster W, you can hit OK to select all. And I typically just run my alignments using the default settings. Um, and then you would hit OK to actually run that alignment. Um, but of course, mine's already aligned, so I'm not going to waste time doing that. One thing you'll notice is there are some missing base position. Um, these typically concentrate along the beginning and the end of the sequences. And that's just because there is going to be variation in the amplification process and how well the primer is attached in the quality of the reads produced. And so it's very common to have missing base positions uh, in your data. Mega allows you to um, adjust for those missing bases uh, later on, which you'll see. The first thing that you'll want to do is you will want to find the best DNA or protein model for your data. Um, it automatically selects the data you have open, um, which is one very convenient thing about Mega. Uh, I will hit yes to this. And so here is where you will need to begin kind of thinking about how you want to run your maximum likelihood tree. Ideally, you run the model selection with the same parameters as what you will run the maximum likelihood tree with. And so we're going to start from an automatic neighbor joining tree. Um, we are going to look for the best nucleotide substitution model as opposed to the protein model. And this is what I was talking about here. The partial deletion option allows you to um, adjust the threshold for how many missing bases can be present in the data set um, at a single base position. So I'll show you what I mean. So when we say a 95% cutoff, what that means is for each one of these base positions, a 95% cutoff means that there needs to be a base specified for at least 95% of the sequences in the alignment. So for instance, we have these two missing bases at this base position. That is going to be above the 95% threshold. And so this base position will be incorporated into our phylogeny given a 95% cutoff. If we have less than 95% coverage at a base position, such as say this position at the very beginning, um, this base position will most likely not be included in the alignment. And so depending on what your sequences look like, you can adjust this threshold as needed, okay? You can also do complete deletion where, or use all sites regardless of missing data. So partial deletion is always kind of the best case scenario, in my opinion. Then you can also at this stage select which codon positions you'd like to incorporate. Um, right, it's not letting me do this because I just deselected all these. When you deselect this, it uh, takes it out of the analysis. It will select a model not, not including those base positions. So I, unless I have a really good reason um, from the literature to exclude a codon position, I usually keep all of them in. And then you can hit OK. And this is going to run through all of the nucleotide substitution models that are pre-programmed within MEGA, um, which are all fairly standard use. 
and the output will be this table. And so you can see it will automatically sort the what Mega believes is the most appropriate substitution model to the top. So that's going to be a general time reversible model with a gamma distribution and invariant sites. And the way that I know that is because they give you the definitions of all of these abbreviations down here. Uh, you don't need to know this from scratch or look somewhere else for it. It's all here. Um, you can see that the plus I parameter is given here and the plus G parameter is given here. And so these are automatically sorted based on the Bayesian information criterion. So the lowest BIC number is going to be at the top. So we can minimize that. You can always pull that back up here if you need to. Then we will go to the phylogeny button here, and we are going to be constructing a maximum likelihood tree. We will be using the active data. And so this window pops up. And so to start out with, I would personally just do a test of phylogeny set to none. That is just going to be a quick check of whether the results look like what we expect. So the substitution type will be nucleotide. We're going to use the model that uh, was selected as the best fit according to MEGA, which was the general time reversible model with G plus I parameters. Um, I'm going to keep the partial deletion at 95% and incorporate all codon positions. And then when you are all done with that, you can hit OK. And it is going to very quickly produce a maximum likelihood tree for you. And one thing that's great about this program is that it actually produces captions for you. Um, this is free to use. They just ask that you cite the authors of the program if you were to do that. This involved 40 nucleotide sequences and of particular importance, it tells you how many positions are in the final data set after filtering uh, for that 95% coverage threshold. And so this is really important to pay attention to because if you are expecting a lot more base positions to be incorporated into your phylogeny, you may want to adjust the partial deletion parameter um, to account for that. And so this gives you the sort of branching pattern. For a maximum likelihood tree produced in MEGA, the length of the branches are directly proportionate to the number of substitutions um, represented. And so if you were to, let's say we go from this clade here over to this clade here, uh, that would essentially equate the pairwise genetic distance between these two clades. So that's just something really useful uh, about a maximum likelihood phylogram that you don't get from a Bayesian phylogeny produced in Beast or Beauty. And so I'm actually not even going to save this. You can if you want, but that is just a quick check um, that say, you know, the sequences from the Arctic Ocean are, as we expect, grouping together. Things from the Weddell Sea are also grouping together off Japan. This looks like what I would expect this to look like, knowing where these sequences came from and what species they represent. So I'm going to discard these results. And when we go back to this window of specifying the maximum likelihood phylogeny, I am this time going to implement a bootstrap method to test the phylogeny. Bootstrap confidence comes from how many of those 10,000 trees did this certain branch pattern occur? So if there's a node with a 100% uh, bootstrap confidence, that means that out of those 10,000 bootstrap replicates, this branching pattern occurred 100% of the time. Um, and so the higher that bootstrap number, the more confident we are that that pattern is robust. Um, that can be further supported by Bayesian posterior probabilities. And so what I would say is when you run this, don't run it on a whim. Uh, I'll hit OK here just so you can see kind of the pace at which this goes. It will vary from computer to computer. 
but these take a while to run. Typically, I try and do you know, one of these per day if I'm building, you know, a lot of different trees. And so it also takes a lot of bandwidth. It can slow down your computer. So if you have a lab computer to do this on um, or a spare laptop, like a work laptop, um, I would recommend running these phylogenies on there and just letting them run because it will typically take at least a few hours. And so I will come back when I have this tree um, produced and we'll go through kind of how you parse through the results. When your tree is done running, it'll look something like this. Um, it's essentially the same topology as before, but this time you have this extra tab here, which gives you the bootstrap consensus tree. And this is the tab that reports uh, the actual bootstrap confidence of your branching patterns. So going back to the original tree, uh, one thing that I didn't mention before uh, are some of these settings on the left-hand side. So the first thing that you typically want to do um, for your final tree is making sure that your tree is rooted at the correct place. So you can do that. You can select um, which branch you'd like to root the tree on using this button here. Um, and so, for instance, for this one, this is such a short branch. <laughs> um, so this is the out group for this genus that I'm analyzing here. So I want to make sure that it's selecting the correct out group. Uh, in this case, it did. It parsed that as the out group, but sometimes it doesn't. And so you just want to make sure that you do that before pulling any statistics from your trees. You also want to do that uh, on the bootstrap consensus tree as well. So again, it did parse the correct out group, but just to be sure, you can select the out group manually as well. Uh, another thing that I failed to mention before uh, about the original tree output is you can select uh, and deselect to have the branch lengths uh, written out like it was before. So this is the actual number of substitutions that are going to be uh, represented by that branch, essentially just the branch length. Uh, you can, um, yeah, deselect that if you don't want to see that. It does tend to make things a little jumbled. So I usually don't have that selected. Um, so what you're going to do is for the bootstrap consensus tree, this is going to be what you use to report um, bootstrap confidences of your tree. So typically what you're going to do is you are going to report the topology of the original tree um, or the topology of your Bayesian tree. And then you are going to manually add the bootstrap consensus values of those branches. So in my lab, it's typical that we report the maximum likelihood tree. So you can see the branch lengths uh, and then we report both the bootstrap consensus value uh, or the bootstrap uh, confidence of each branching pattern, as well as the Bayesian probability of each branch point as well. Uh, and that gives you just two different values that convey confidence in your branching patterns. And so if you want to know how to create uh, a Bayesian phylogeny, I also have a tutorial walking you through how to do that using the programs Beauty and Beast, uh, which is going to be linked down in the description. Uh, also part of that tutorial is how to use the program Fig Tree to finalize and create uh, really nice looking figures. Um, but to do that, you need to export this tree in a very particular way. So if you go up to File, you can save the current session uh, as a mega file. So that is readable by mega. You can pull this window back up uh, anytime that you'd like. Uh, what you will need to do in order to edit in FigTree is export the current tree in the NUIC uh, format. So if you select that, you want to make sure that you select both the branch lengths and the bootstrap values to be exported. And then you hit OK. And what you should see is a window like this where uh, it essentially translates your tree into a different file format. And this file is going to be readable uh, by FigTree. You can open this in FigTree and you'll see your phylogeny there. So you'll want to save that 
uh, and then you'll be good to go to create your figure. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, and let me know in the comments if there's anything that I missed or anything that I could improve in my workflow. So thank you so much for watching.